Today we have this really nice integral parameterized by the real numbers s and a and let's see what structure it evaluates to and whether we can come up with some interesting or aesthetically pleasing results. First up we're going to call our integral i so we have something to refer to and we're going to expand the hyperbolic sine function here using its definition where we know that the hyperbolic sine or the sinh of z equals e to the z minus e to the negative z divided by 2. So this implies that we can write i as twice the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s divided by e to the... Now z here is replaced by a times x so we have e to the ax minus e to the negative ax dx and viewers of the channel know how much I love to apply the geometric series expansion whenever I see exponentials like these in the denominator. But first up we're going to have to convert the structure of the integrand into something that gives us a convergent series on this interval. And for that I'm going to expand using uh, this term here e to the negative ax. So this has the benefit of modifying our integral i into twice the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s times e to the negative ax times 1 by 1 minus e to the negative 2 ax, which does provide the requisite structure for applying the geometric series argument. So we know that 1 by 1 minus x can be written as the sum over the non-negative integers k of x to the k when the absolute value of x is less than 1. So for our case, we have 1 by 1 minus e to the negative 2 ax. So for positive values of a, so that's one restriction we know we need for the parameter a. So for positive values of a, we can write this as the sum over the non-negative integers k of e to the negative 2 a k x. So all of this implies that we can write i here as twice the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s times e to the negative a x times the sum over k of e to the negative 2 a k x dx. And because these two here are independent of the k variable, we can slip them inside the summation operator. So we have i being equal to twice the integral from 0 to infinity of the sum over k of x to the s. And multiplying out the two exponential functions gives me e to the... I can factor out an x term, so that will give me negative 2... Uh, factor out a times x, that is, negative 2k plus 1 times ax dx. Now the golden question here is whether we can switch up the order of the integration and the summation operators. Well you have x to the s, a polynomial function, multiplied by a damped exponential function. So we all know the exponentials win out and hence there are no problems regarding convergence or boundedness here. So yes, using Fubini's theorem we can in fact perform the switch up and we now have twice the sum over the non-negative integers k of the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s times e to the negative 2k plus 1 ax dx. And next up is again a trick that viewers of the channel are quite familiar with and I really love invoking this. We're going to take the argument of the exponential function here. That's uh, letting 2k plus 1 times a x. We're letting it equal to some other variable t. So this implies that dx here equals dt by 2k plus 1 times a. So this implies that i now in the t world is twice the sum over k of the integral from, well, the limits of integration are clearly not bothered, so we have the integral from 0 to infinity, of t to the s divided by 2k plus 1 to the s times a to the s times e to the negative t, and of course we have the differential element here, 2k plus 1 uh, div dt divided by 2k plus 1 times a. So multiplying out the terms in the denominators, we have twice the sum over k, of the integral from 0 to infinity, t to the s times e to the negative t, divided by 2k plus 1 to the s plus 1 times a to the s plus 1. And 
because a here is just a constant with respect to both integration and summation, we can just pop this outside of everything that is, and we have 2 by a to the s plus 1 outside. And inside we have the structure consisting of uh, some functions of t being multiplied, and we're dividing it by 2k plus 1 to the s plus 1. And this term here is independent of the t variable with respect to which we're integrating. So this implies that i can be written as 2 divided by a to the s plus 1 times the sum over k of 1 by 2k plus 1 to the s plus 1 times the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the s times e to the negative t dt, which we recognize as the gamma function evaluated at s plus 1. Oh, sorry about that. And that would be an excellent time to like and subscribe. So anyway, we can write i here finally as twice or... or Better to say 2 divided by a to the s plus 1 times the sum over the non-negative integers k of 1 by 2k plus 1 to the s plus 1 times the gamma function evaluated at s plus 1. And now let's play around with the parameters a and s to see if we can find some fascinating results. A pretty cool result that I found here was letting a be equal to one half and s being equal to just one. So this gave me the integral from zero to infinity of x divided by the cinch of x by two dx. And this evaluates out to two divided by a, which is one half divided by s plus one, which is two times the sum let me just give myself some writing space here. The sum over the non-negative integers k of 1 by 2k plus 1 squared times gamma 2. Now gamma 2 is just one factorial, which is 1. And we're left with 2 divided by 1 fourth times this infinite series, which evaluates to, we've done it time and time again on the channel, it evaluates to pi squared by 8. So we have some nice cancellation taking place, multiplying upstairs and downstairs by 4. This gives you an 8, and again, some nice cancellation. So this is quite nice, the integral from 0 to infinity of x divided by the cinch of x by 2 dx equals the square of pi. Similarly, if you get a bit fancy and by letting a be equal to phi, and again, just let s be equal to 1 here for aesthetic purposes, you can have a pretty nice result of the integral from 0 to infinity of x divided by the cinch of phi times x, dx being equal to 2 divided by the square of phi times, again, the same infinite series that we know evaluates to pi squared by 8. So you have this really nice beautiful result of pi squared divided by 4 times phi squared. And you can have some more interesting constants involved, for example, by letting s equal to 2. Now, s equal to 2 will correspond to having the sum over the non-negative integers k of 1 by 2k plus 1 to the power of 3, which is, in fact, 7 eighths of Apery's constant, that is zeta 3. So yeah, this is a pretty cool integral and I enjoyed evaluating it. Let me, know, let me know in the comment section whether you found any more aesthetically pleasing results and I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you, see you next time.